the, there may be a question as to why we were getting an outline of the thigh and the perineum if we're only doing an AFO. The reason is, is that's what's used to establish the mid line. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that our, our contours are We haven't missed anything here. And we want to mark three points. The most medial part of the medial malleolus, most medial part of the knee. Is this warm? And I'm gonna reduce this by five millimeters because she had on slacks and they were rolled up and then the arc of the perineum. So what we do is we take the meter stick and using the bisecting of the perineum as a point, rotate it uh, medially. And the idea is that in quiet standing, we should have the patient's knees three millimeters apart, excuse me, three centimeters apart. <laughs> and the ankles six millimeters apart. Those points rotate and whichever one it touches first, you see here it's the ankle, that becomes our mid sagittal line. We can also see our baseline here. We want to transfer the baseline to the mid sagittal line. Okay, so everything is worked out now from the mid sagittal line. From the baseline to Ankle height is 7.8 centimeters. So we're going to mark that. And then the height to the neck of the fibula is 39.5. We should label these also. And this is ankle joint height. From the neck of the fibula, we said we had 20 millimeters clearance. So we mark that point. And from that, we mark 37 millimeters, which is the width of the band. Now, using your square, you make a line perpendicular to the neck of the fibula, or excuse me, perpendicular to the uh, mid, -satural mid -satural line. line, thank you, at the height of the ankle joint. Notice this goes from the mid line all the way across the outline. But from the neck of the fibula, we make marks at the proximal band line and distal band line. And they only cross within the outline. With this done now, we want to establish a mid ankle line, and we do that by measuring the outline of the ankle, and it is 56 millimeters, half of that is 28. 
and drop a perpendicular Now we want to correct the MLs. The measured ML at the ankle was, or excuse me, at the calf was 11.8, and this was in the middle. So here we've actually got 10.8. So our corrected ML is going to need to, to add to each side of five millimeters. Okay. What about padding and the thickness of the band? We need to add for that too. And that's three more millimeters to each side. So we're gonna be adding a total of eight millimeters to each side. So. There. Notice I'm doing this at the midpoint of the band. So that when I draw in the corrected ML, it follows the contour of the band. Like so. And we're going to correct the ankle joint. Ankle joint ML was. Point seven. So from this midpoint, we should have on each side um, 3.2, 6.7 is 3.35, right? That's just dividing the ML at the ankle in half, so we know yep. which side to, from the midpoint we would go to. So to that, we need to add five and six. Three millimeters to each side for if we're using a clevis joint, which I'm assuming we are. Then you add five millimeters, or excuse me, six millimeters medially and five millimeters laterally for joint clearance. Why that extra millimeter? The explanations always given is that there is a slight tendency towards pronation during mid stance and you want just a little bit of extra clearance there. And that being said, I have never seen anything documented that says that's correct but it's in every textbook. So if you ask this question on the boards, that's the answer they're gonna want. So that's what we're gonna go with. So we got 3.5, and 6, 6.25. This is medial. Medial is always the side with the mid sagittal line. Medial is 4.25. And on this side is 4.25. Now, at these points, you want to extend the lines parallel to the mid sagittal line 25 millimeters in either direction. And since there's nine millimeters gap here, 25 is going to be 19. So I just brought this in so that the clevis joint that he's speaking about is so that the when you're measuring, it's this width is the three millimeter width that he's leaving room for right there. So now all we have left to do is connect the dots. If you want to maintain the contours within three millimeters of the contours of the uh, limb that you have, so you continue from the edge of the calf band, 
make a smooth flowing curve into the shape of the limb. I want this to continue straight. If it's extreme, you might want to put a curve in here to bring it into the limb, something like this. These curves are all negotiable. If you have a joint that extends further than this, then you want to start the contour here. If you're not using a clevis joint and the, it's only this big, you might want to make the contour more distally. Um, laterally, probably not going to need to do that at all. But you're making a, probably a bigger curve here. So it cannot curve till after the end of the joint. The joint is not bendable. This is true. We can't do the rest of it till we have the shoe. 